Hello Gobblehots and welcome to a tutorial on how to train your asteroid. Well, no, it's actually is building your base on an asteroid. Okay, in the first part of this series of tutorials, we put a solar array on the top of there, but now we need to have some kind of control before we send some curls on it, just in case Jebediah decides to dock to the base at 50 meters per second. We need some way to stop the asteroid from spinning. And you always keep the panels pointed towards the sun. You can see it's not exactly pointing at the sun, so let's go remedy that. Okay, what we're going to do is build some thruster blocks. And all we need is to build some simple probes. And I want to put four of them on there. Because if you think of RCS thrusters, you normally pair about four on the outside of the rocket to give you control. And also the only special part for this you need is the claw. The claw knows how to do things. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of a joke there, but I failed completely. Anyway, what we're going to do is attach this probe to one side, one of four sides of the asteroid, and then you have control. So I got a reaction wheel, that'll help with the control, at least rotating the probe at the very least. It'll help a bit with the asteroid control, it means that you don't have to use so much RCS fuel. Or talking about RCS fuel, you've got the RCS place anywhere thruster here, which I was planning to use, but you see the thrust limiter on the ISP? Now, if we check the Venera engine, you can see that the ISP is higher and the thrust is higher on this. So what we're going to do is use the Venera engine. And the idea being that, you, all the difference, sorry, is that the RC place anyway, RTS uses monopropellant, but the Venera engine requires liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we're going to use a small tank here, and since it has a ISP, higher ISP rating, it has, it'll take less fuel to do the same job as the RCS thrusters would. So I've placed four on there, but also I'm going to do a little extra because some thruster, RCS thruster blocks has a way of thrusting in four, well, in five directions in total, all the sides and as well the direction away from the thruster block if you get my meaning. And that's why I'm placing these here. It'll also give us extra control to thrust towards the asteroid to dock this onto there, or at least get the claw to grab onto it. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got the claw, we've got the probe, we've got the uh, rotational reaction wheels. Uh, we've got thrusters and the fuel tank, but now we need some way to power it. So, solar cells, obviously. Now that is what we need. That is the thruster block complete. All we do need to do now is attach it to some kind of rig to get it to the asteroid. Now I'm going to use, as you can see, we've attached a decoupler and I want four of these. So there's a attachment system on here. Normally it's used to attach four engines underneath for boosting or getting into orbit or whatever. But I'm going to put it upside down and use that as the part. So connect it to there. But how do we get more of these probes on there? Well, if you use the tool at the top, and that gives us the root part. So if you click on that, click on that root part, you can see now we've placed, we set that four port thruster thing as the main part, the root part, to be exact. All you have to do now is put symmetry to four with the probe core selected and everything else. Use the select the decoupler, it selects it all in. And attach, hey presto, done. Now I have to mention at this point, those claws at the top are slightly clipping, which causes some problems now and again if they get too close to each other and everything jiggles out of control. So what, in hindsight, or at least probably something you can do, is use the offset tools. Select the decouplers down the bottom and offset them slightly so they're not touching each other. You can then use struts on the fuel tanks to stabilize them so they're not they're not wobbling all over the place. But other than that, now we need to build a rocket to get it to the asteroid. So a standard build, probe core, adapter to get the large probe core, a large reaction wheel because we need the large rockets. And again, don't forget solar panels because we need to charge this as well. Because after that's been spent, we want to deorbit that. Okay, I'm using the larger tank here and the Poodle engine. 
That should give us enough Delta V to get to the asteroid in question for this tutorial. Oh yeah, and don't forget struts. Struts everywhere. That stops it wobbling. Okay, next we need to build a launcher. Now hopefully you know a bit more about how to build a launcher. So I'm only going to go through this a quick speed build. And also you'll notice that I set the decoupler nodes at separate stages so they can be decoupled at separate times because we don't want to attach them all to the asteroid at the same time. Now a little bit about the launcher. It's going to be a very simple build. It's going to be a single launch rocket and you can see there I've used four of the large tanks, a mainsail engine and all I'm going to do now is attach on some radial decouplers some of the large solid rocket boosters. Now also don't forget the fairings. I did think I mentioned, forgot to mention that with the when I covered the main thrusters with the, the, the fairings itself. Because you have atmospherics in this game and you need to account for that. Okay, again, don't forget to strut everything up, otherwise it will wobble way out of control. And there seems to be some odd thing with the those solid rocket boosters. The struts seem to clip inside the rocket, so I'm not sure that's a problem. But anyway, that's the rocket itself. The only thing I forgot to add was some struts. Again, yes, I found that tall rockets like this can wobble. Adding struts using those parts makes it easy. Just delete the fairing first and then attach it. And also, I found that these claws, as I said, in testing, they wobbled about, and when they clipped, they caused the entire rocket to wobble. But I found that opening the claws helped remedy that, but only for a little time. Now for the rendezvous. Okay, so what we've got here, we're going to target the asteroid. You've got the asteroid at an odd orbit, and you have to take note on which way it's rotating or which way it's orbiting, because you need to launch in that direction. Uh, now, okay, we're going to set up our alignment. Set focus on curve, it makes it a lot easier. And you want to get at the center point when the, the center or the equator lines up with the orbit. You can use the moon or the man to line up the equator. And what you want to do is get the probe just before you come to the encounter on those orbits. Now you can set the orbit or the launch points at two positions because the orbit intersects the their equator in two positions so you can launch from either way from this time we need to launch in a northerly west direction so we're going to have to go in the opposite direction of the rotation of Kirby now Kirby rotates which means you get 174 meters per second extra boost if you're launching east but since you're going to get west we're going to lose that extra speed however that's not too bad because we have enough thrust to we have enough delta V in this rocket Okay, so coming up into orbit, make sure that your main probe core is controlled from here, just in case. And you can see these are wobbling. Yes, when they start clipping, they wobble and cause everything to go awry. Now, I found opening and closing them helps remedy that. But as I said, if you use the offset tool in the VAB, you should be okay as long as they don't clip each other. Now, I couldn't put struts on that for some reasons, but never mind. Anyway, I'm hoping that you all know how to get into orbit. So I can skip to the getting into the right inclination. You can see the inclination is not correct. So what we're going to do is use the radial maneuver node and set this into as close as possible to get this into the right inclination as the orbit we're trying to intercept. Now, I find that 0.1 is okay from doing this tutorial beforehand and commentating on it after. So this maneuver is fine. You don't have to worry so much. I just hit this point, press F5 to quick save. But now we have to intercept the asteroid itself. We have to rendezvous with it. We have to get close. So what you want to do is Take note which direction the asteroid is going and decide where it may be if you're going to thrust towards it. And if you've set it up as a target, you should get the close approach markers, which are very handy. Now it's just a matter of moving the mover node around a bit until you get the nodes closer 
and in adjusting your prograde and retrograde burns. You can see by here I messed up. Oh no, it's it's too far away. We're gonna in intercept the orbit too late, and the asteroid's gonna be all the over the other side. Okay, they're getting closer by there. Let's reduce the thrust a bit. This is all about fine tuning your maneuver. Now this can take some time, I think can take some practice, but with a bit of practice you get better and makes things easier. Now this is what NASA does, well they don't actually drive a dragon maneuver out, but they do all these calculations. That's basically what the computer is doing here, is calculating what your maneuver would be if you provide more or less thrust on it. And you can see we're getting a close approach. I'll have to note by here that our 100 kilometer distance at the distance of this asteroid is fine. You don't need to get any closer. I like to get a bit closer. If you get a bit closer, that means you use less delta V for cancelling your orbit or getting closer. So all you have to do is burn that node. And to note here, because the node is quite far out, the asteroid is quite far out, it takes very little to do a burn too much or burn too less. And you see, I've burned a bit too much by here. So what you can do is either burn prograde to check to see if you're going to get close approach, or perhaps go retrograde. Now, don't be afraid to use the SAS computer for your automatic guidance. I know I forget to, and I feel like as if it's cheating because I started this game in 0.19 when the point at retrograde or point at maneuver marker did not exist. Well, you can see here, we're getting closer. We're almost there. I've been a bit too much though, I think. So I'm gonna burn the other way. We want the first intersect, the orange marker, not the red one. The red one is the second orbit around. So I think we're gonna get a close approach with that. So I'm gonna skip ahead in the video by here, where we've done the burn and we're gonna time accelerate. Say bye bye to Kirby and head on to our asteroid where we can take control of the universe. <laughs> okay, so after that maniacal laugh, we can get closer. We can now zoom in on the map and we can look at this close approach. You see the first close approach is quite far away. This is something to do with KSP. It wasn't reporting that the second closest approach was the one that we require. See, we're getting closer, but I don't know understand. Now, at this point, you want to make sure you're pointing retrograde when you get close and burn hell for leather. Make sure that the nav ball is set to target. If it is not, make sure you've got the asteroid target and click on the asteroid and click on the nav ball to change the target. Now, by here, I'm showing what happens when you cancel the speed. You're actually maneuvering your rocket to get into the same orbit as the asteroid. So if you're at the same speed, you're in the same orbit. It's a handy thing to note. Now once that is done, you can head towards it. You can get close to your asteroid. Now if you're at the high orbit that this asteroid is at, burning directly to the asteroid is okay because they won't swap positions as if you were closer to Kirby because they normally swap positions because you're orbiting so fast, so close to a body, and you're swapping places, basically. That's the best way I can describe it. But anyway, now we're close enough, you can kill your speed. You don't want to get up and too close and personal, because you want to decouple one of these thrusters. So, decouple. And it's heading on its way towards the asteroid. And because there's a probe corny, we can take control. So now what you want to do is arm the claw and set control from here. That makes sure that you're controlling it from the front of this and not from the probe body itself. Now you've got a couple of controls here. If you enable the RCS, you've got the I, J, K and L keys to maneuver up, down, left and right. You can use the WASD keys to uh, or rotate your rocket, the probe, and the H key is to thrust forward since you don't have any normal thrusters on this. The N key doesn't work to thrust backwards because we've got no thrusters on the front. Okay, now we're heading towards the asteroid. You may want time warp, but at your own discretion because 
you don't want to bump into the asteroid. Okay, so now we're close. We need to get our right position. Now I'm going to use the solar panels for this job. Because, well, it's an easy way. It's square. It means we can find out, because the asteroid isn't square, we can say one thruster on this side, one thruster on that side, one thruster on the other side. So I'm going to put one on this side of the asteroid. Now, I suggest you don't hit the asteroid any faster than 0.5 meters per second. I've had a couple of problems where uh, the core bounce is off, so do be careful at this point. Just head in slowly, and hey presto, we have connection. And you can really do rinse and repeat. Simple jobs for a simple Kerbal life. Now at this point, I'm going to ask you, what else do you want to see on this asteroid? These are the main requirements that you need, the minimum, power and control. Now all we need is a solar -like base where asteroids are habitat and some kind, perhaps a science, maybe even drilling to get the ore resources. Not that there's much ore resources on these asteroids. But now we have control of this. We need to determine what else we're going to add to this. So in the comments below, let me know what you want me to add to this tutorial and I will try to do so. As I say, we need Kerbals. We may need an escape system, and what else? But as I'm talking by here, you can see I'm setting the other probe to crash into Kerbin to disintegrate within the atmosphere. So let me know in the comments below what you want added to this. But please note that I was only planning on doing four of these tutorial guides for the asteroid base. If we get into more, I'd do four, I think, for the main core of this tutorial, and then any additional you can suggest to me. But we'll get to that point when we get to the point. At the moment, we're going to burn this up. I'm going to say things like, if you found this helpful, hit that like button. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want more of these videos and you're not do so, and you're not, you'll do so, well, do so, subscribe, or something along those lines. All I can say now is, I'm Orbiter. Uh, yeah, come on. Where's the tax? Yeah, there you go. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Ah, my outro.